Okay, so what is up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about sports photography. Over the weekend, I was covering this sports event. I made a cool video about it. I'm gonna show you the video in a bit. And afterwards, I'm gonna talk about six photos that I personally liked and letting you know how to improve your sports photography, including all the settings that I use. Let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite shots. I have them here on my phone. So I started shooting around 1 p.m. and around that time it was really, really sunny. I mean, there were lots of harsh shadows and you know, the sun was really harsh on the subjects. So one thing that I had to do was I had to make sure that I didn't have overexposed images. In that kind of situation, if you don't have an ND filter, if you don't know what an ND filter is, it is like this sort of glass that you put over your lens that sort of makes it darker. I didn't have an ND filter for this shoot, so all the settings I had to do were in camera. So first of all, one thing I had to do was to expose for the faces. I think the most important thing, if your camera doesn't have a good, you know, dynamic range, you're gonna wanna expose for the faces, for the subjects. I was taking lots of pictures of the people, so I had to expose for their faces when they were playing. And to do this, I had to increase the shutter speed. I had the shutter speed as high as possible. I had my ISO pretty low because you know you have to balance it and you don't want to have too much grain. And for the aperture, I tried to have the aperture as low as possible because I still wanted to have um, some depth of field. So this was why these were the kind of settings I was using earlier in the day. And these are the photos that I got from. Another reason why you're gonna to wanna to have your shutter speed high is because this is a high paced, you know, high intensity activity. You know, you're gonna have many moving, fast moving subjects. So you want to have like the highest shutter speed possible so that there is no blur in your image. You want the ball or the person or the racket to be perfectly focused and not just blurred. So you wanna have your shutter speed as high as possible. And yes, so as the sun went down, I was able to get a couple more photos, which were really, really cool. I like to take photos where, you know, the sun is behind the subject, so it kind of leaks into the frame, into the lens, and it gives a really cool effect. So um, these were some of the photos that I loved from it. Generally, when you're taking um, sunset photos, it's always a good thing to have your exposure low so you can really capture, you can really capture the true color of the sunsets. You're gonna have all the oranges come to the frame and um, it just makes your whole image a little bit warmer. So shutter speed, still pretty high, but not too high. You can have your ISO still pretty low and then you can further reduce your aperture. I 
I actually recorded the last part to this video, but I was too quick to remove the SD card and it didn't write onto the card. So I lost all that footage, but then basically I've already shown you four of my best photos and then there are two more that I took in the nighttime. And just so you guys know, night photography is totally different from daytime photography. So the settings are gonna be different. The way you shoot is gonna be different. Uh, I talked in the previous section about the ISO, but one good tip I'll give you is just to set your ISO to auto, but then give it a range limit. You can have the lowest ISO be 500 and the highest ISO be about 6400 so you should have your ISO between that range for the other settings your ISO has to be auto so you can reduce your shutter speed to about like 600 or 800 that's still going to give you that crisp sharp photo but also it's going to have more light in the photos and your aperture at this point can be as low as possible take it down to the least it could go to get all the amount of light that you want into the photo yes and my final tip that i'm going to give you i didn't say it in the previous recording but what you're going to want to do is you want to shoot in burst mode which is like a continuous mode or like a continuous shutter mode so it takes multiple photos at once you don't end up missing crucial moment and that's how the burst mode works so this is something you should definitely use if you're shooting um, high intensity fast paced sports events such as these so these have been my tips if you guys like the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe and let me know any comments that you have about the camera and or any other tips that you have for sports photography and i'll see you guys in the next video